So basically, I want to go back to some historical motivation and just I will just go very, very quickly through uh, what I see as maybe some of the important meteoristics that have been involved in this history. And then I'll go over a fairly detailed history of applications of meteoristic for the vehicle routing problem. I think I will have to skip the part on VRPTW, but uh, eventually I'll be glad to make my slides available. And, uh, and then, so the focus will be on trajectory-based meteoristics for, I would say, mainly historical reasons. And also because this is uh, where I have the most uh, material. And then I'll talk quickly about population-based meteoristics and pretend to present a conclusion. So the one thing I, I, I think is, I'm not going back now uh, 30 years or 35 years, I'm going back 50 years. I think that uh, basically, if we want to have some vision of this, uh, of a number of things, we have to go back to early results on complexity, uh, or I, shall I say results about complexity in the early 70s, which clearly, well, indicated that it was little chance that we could find polynomial time algorithms or tough combinatorial problems, and that we would have to resort to heuristics. Now, I would just like to point out that uh, if we think about going back 50 years, well, 1973 is a publication of the Lynn Kernighan paper in operations research. So that, that pretty much tells us that we had good heuristics, but those were basically based on classical approach, uh, constructive heuristics followed by iterative improvement that is local search methods. And, and then something happened, which I think came as a shock to the OR community, which was the publication of the 1983 paper on simulated annealing by Kirk Patrick, Gillette and Vicky which kind of, I think, shattered the vision. I think that before that, people were kind of in a bit of a, okay, let's just keep on doing what we've been doing forever and it's okay. And then this paper comes and proposes an algorithm that has convergence uh, guarantees for um, combinatorial problems. So this, and also written by physicists, which is the ultimate insult. But uh, in fact, uh, simulated annealing can be seen as a controlled random walk. And there are a number of also generalization that, uh, that are quite interesting and which have been used. Then shortly on the heels of, uh, of uh, simulated annealing, we had uh, Taboo Search, which was, uh, here I have uh, two figures, 1977, 1986. Uh, Fred Glover likes that we say that he proposed taboo search in 1977, but uh, the the paper that really coined the uh, the approach was his 1986 paper on uh, future paths for integer programming, and this is also the paper in which the word metaheuristic was coined. So basically, what is taboo search in and if we try just to describe this in a sentence, it's basically local search with memories and which allow to avoid, uh, to overcome local optima and still avoid cycling. And we have some uh, fancy things like search intensification and search diversification based on other types of memory to make the search more uh, powerful. Then we have something like uh, variable neighbor, uh, neighborhood search that was proposed by Ensign M. Lenadovich, which is just uh, the idea. Well, in fact, the VNS and all its, and its complete uh, description goes far beyond just being the application of multiple neighborhood. 
but if you do variable neighborhood descent, this is pretty much it. And then, then we had a whole bunch of other of other methods. Uh, we talked about large. Uh, I mean, Stefan talked about large neighborhood search. So here I have 1997 instead of 1998 because I'm referring to Shah's presentation at the MIC conference in Sofia Antipolis in 1997. Then we have also GRASP, hyperheuristics, iterated local search, and so on. So a whole bunch of methods that were proposed that uh, to complement, and which eventually were eventually did uh, made up their way to the handbook of meteoristics. So what about trajectory-based meteoristics for the VRP? Well, uh, the first thing that we need if we're going to apply those, uh, those type of methods is we need local search operators that will manipulate uh, solutions. So allow us to go from the current solution to the next one, defining implicitly neighborhoods. So we have here, I have a pretty big list, which is, uh, um, which is probably incomplete, but covers a lot of the things. So to opt, or opt, to opt star, relocate, exchange, genie exchange, cross exchange, and also cyclic transfer or ejection chains. When I teach my course on, on those type of methods, you have nice drawings of all the operators, but we don't have time for this this morning. So let's, let's just try. So what I do now is I try just to give you a historical rundown of how those things came about. And let me start with a bunch of methods, which I call pioneers. So those were people who, I mean, meta-heuristics were just new on new kids on the block. And so they were, they were indeed the pioneers trying to, to uh, apply those meta-heuristics to vehicle routing problems. So for example, if you're, if we're looking at annealing, we have a paper by Robuste and co-authors in 1990 that was tested only on four instances and in that complex neighborhoods. We had a paper by Alpha, which was based on a root first cluster second heuristic and three up neighborhood and which turned out not to be competitive. Uh, and then more solid efforts, especially Osman, Ibrahim Osman in 1993, did his dissertation on the vehicle routing problem. He developed a so-called Lambda interchange neighborhood, which is a combination of exchanges and relocations of fixed size. He developed a special cooling schedule for this and he, he got pretty good results. Then Alex van Bredam, in a few years later, tested uh, several variants of simulated annealing, but uh, the, the unfortunate conclusion of this is that he could not match the results that were already obtained with uh, taboo search methods. And this was, this was a bit like the end for simulated annealing. Let's talk about taboo search. One thing that I think lots of people don't know is that the first implementation of taboo search for vehicle routing was uh, by Willard, 1989. This was a master thesis at Imperial College where he used this uh, giant tour representation and he had neighborhood based on two up, two and three up moves and as far as I and as I know, this method was not really competitive. Then um, Pureza, Victoria Pureza and Paolo Francia, a couple of years later, proposed a, I think, a fairly direct implementation of taboo search where they were using uh, relocate neighborhood and exchange. And one thing that was very important is that they were maintaining feasibility of solutions. And um, the, 
the outcome of this was uh, results that were not that fantastic. And this brings me to say another stage in history, which I call Middle Ages. Um, and we have a couple of interesting papers here. First thing, Osman in his dissertation also um, developed a table search implementation that worked with the Lambda Interchange neighborhood. And uh, he managed to get uh, pretty good results, however, not the best. And then Eric Tayar at the same time was uh, implementing similar neighborhood in his dissertation and uh, and then all kinds of brilliant ideas in this dissertation decomposition into smaller sub problems for which he thought table search would be more powerful he was using also he introduced a continuous diversification uh, procedure and the, he had uh, very, very good results. But uh, maybe one complaint of many people was that uh, nobody quite knew how long this took. Then 1994, the paper, this is the table root papers, joint work with uh, Alain Hertz and Gilbert Laporte. This was published in 1994, but to be quite frank, it's a research effort that started in around 1989. Uh, we developed a special kind of neighborhoods for this. So the Gini neighborhood, with, which is relocating customers, but also re-optimizing in the around uh, the, the routes. And, and, and among, I think, uh, the good ideas in this paper is that we we allowed moves to non-feasible solution. And this was controlled by self-adjusting penalties. And one thing uh, is that when we wrote this paper, I mean, the referees at that time didn't, I think they really lacked experience. So they didn't ask us to do lots of things about all of the new, uh, all of the new features we had added to the algorithm. And among other things, they didn't ask us to say, what happens if you remove this feature from the algorithm? And uh, it turned out that in around 10 years later, uh, a student came and did an implementation of table root, but without the non-feasible solutions and the results were really, really inferior. So this is critical, this idea of moving to non-feasible solutions. We also had continuous diversification. We had the special type of taboos, which is random taboo tags. And uh, at that time, we had pretty much the best results around. Then Rocha and Tayar came up with this adaptive memory concept. Uh, this is, uh, for those who don't know this paper, the Rocha and Tayar paper was in the first, uh, first number of the first volume of Journal of Heuristics. This is a brilliant paper. I strongly recommend reading this paper. Uh, the computational results were excellent both for the VK capacitated VRP and for VRP with time windows. And one thing which is, uh, which is very impressive is that uh, some of those best known solution held for quite a bit of time. So very, very nice contribution to the field. Um, around the same time, Rigo and Rukerol tried to, uh, did an implementation on the ejection chain uh, concept, which is a uh, variant of cyclic transfer neighborhood. Ejection chains had been proposed, in fact, by Glover. They proposed a parallel computing method. And, um, and this was quite good, but would not be the methods on the previous page. Then, a bit later, some deterministic annealing. So this was a 
a paper by Bruce Golden and some colleagues where they applied the so-called record-to-record travel method. So this is uh, this uh, this deterministic annealing is a, is a threshold method, and in fact, it did quite well on fairly large instances. In fact, it was doing better than another table search implementation, and it was also much faster. Keep on going. So good methods always look for more, uh, I would say, exposition. Uh, the unified table search can be seen as some kind of uh, extension revisit uh, revisit of uh, table root. This was done by Jean-François Cordeau in several several papers. The first paper, the 1997 paper, was from his master thesis where he was doing uh, periodic and multi depot VRP, and uh, and it was very effective. Uh, there was in this variant uh, some additional diversification and the computational results were truly excellent. Then Todd and Vigo propose so-called granular table search. So the idea here is not so much that we're changing the method by itself or that we're introducing new fancy uh, fancy neighborhood operators. The idea is that uh, table search can be made more effective by not wasting time looking at bad solutions. So this is the key idea of granular table search, which is to remove from the underlying graph so-called long edges, because we know that it's very unlikely that they're going to be part of the solution. And this indeed led to excellent excellent American results. And, uh, and then some other, some other attempts. So here we have a paper by uh, my friend Christos Tarantilis called Bone Root, which is a combination of table search with adaptive memory. But the idea here is that uh, if you're looking at uh, adaptive memory implementations from uh, Tayar and uh, also other authors in the meantime, the idea was always that we should be decomposing the solution in routes, decomposing and recomposing the solution with full routes. So the, the key idea here is that maybe we should extract root segments, so which we call bones from good quality tours. And in fact, this is a very nice intuition. It works quite well. Uh, some return to deterministic annealing. Uh, so for example, paper by Liet and co-authors in 2004, where they combine some idea, the principles of record to record, so deterministic annealing approach with uh, what they call variable length neighbor lists, in which what they do is they restrict uh, the neighbors, neighborhoods by applying uh, ideas similar to what we see in granular table search. Um, some large neighborhood method <clears throat> by Ergun, but it's large neighborhood in a style a bit different from what uh, has been uh, presented by Stefan uh, previously. And the idea is that we, we look at a complex neighborhood that uh, will modify several routes. So this is why we call this large neighborhood. And, uh, and then the set of moves selected at each iteration is obtained by solving, in fact, a shortest draft problem. So this is, uh, this is a significant effort. Table search doesn't go, doesn't disappear. So some more modern implementations, Zachariadis and Kiranudis, uh, which provided excellent results in 2010. Then Cordeaux and Majberger 
propose a parallel version of Taboo Search that they combine with some ideas of iterated local search, and they show that this could be applied to several variants of VRP and VRP time windows with excellent uh, numerical results. And back to deterministic annealing. So you see the teams are, one, one, one of the things that we can see here is that basically we have those competing general approaches and some authors, what they do is they keep on pushing uh, more implementation of all those ideas. So here, for example, paper by Groer, Golden, and Wazil. Uh, for variable neighborhood search, um, there is this, uh, this amazing paper with Kito Joki. Now, I'm, this is tongue in a cheek remark because I happen to be part of the all in there. Uh, this is a, a paper in which there is uh, seven classical neighborhoods that are used, but the, I would say the interesting feature of the paper is that we have an implementation where we tackle problems with up to 20,000 customers, which was very unusual at that time. And to be totally frank, this paper is a lot more about computer science tricks to be able to run the thing than about, I would say, operations research questions. Then adaptive large neighborhood search. Well, I don't think I need to present much of this and uh, Stefan just made the presentation. Uh, it just that uh, this was in especially a pair of seminal papers in 2006 and 2007 with uh, David Bissinger and they had very impressive results on several problems. So this is a important reference. And, and basically what, what I would say is that uh, if you look a bit beyond those, those papers, those maybe straightforward implementation, you have, hmm, I have a wonderful typo here. I have Ota who decided to stay in French. Um, so, um, you see the tendency to try to, to take whatever works from the, 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 the various framework. So trying to really hybridize everything that can be, take all the good ideas that can be taken. And I strongly recommend, even if it's a bit dated now, the chapter in the Tot and Vigo book, the chapter by Gilbert Laporte, Stefan and Thibault, is excellent reading. And here, this is not meant to be really looked at. This is a table about that presents some of the results on the 14 problems of uh, Christophides, Mgotzi, and Tut. So problems that have between 50 and 200 customers. And uh, before I I leave, uh, I leave the field of VRP. I would just like to emphasize uh, some recent developments. Well, first, this paper that was mentioned uh, previously by Stefan, the Christians and Vandenberger paper with uh, slack induction, which is uh, extremely interesting paper. And uh, another paper, which is a bit dear to my heart, is a paper with uh, Florian Arnold and Kenneth Sorensen, where we look at solving very large scale routing problems, because I think that this is, is one of, it's an important challenge for the future. Now, let me tell you a little bit about VRP time window. Uh, so obviously there's been a lot of implementations of taboo search. The idea is, um, 
is very often to focus on the number of vehicles because this has been typically used as a key uh, measure of efficiency in solutions. Uh, one of the issues is the presence of time windows. And uh, in a sense, it may be seen as creating barriers in the search space. And I can, uh, I can tell you that we did uh, something that was never published, an implementation of Taboroot, which was called Taboroot TW. And one of the issues is what do we do? What do we do with those time windows? So here you have a bunch of, uh, of features of Taboo Search implementations for ERP time window. This is a taken from a transportation science paper co-authored with Oli Brezi. Um, so here, what you have, you can see the different years and different authors. Uh, and you have, you can see the variety, in fact, if, if you're able to read the variety of neighborhood operators that have been used in those papers. And whether they try to, to minimize routes or not, specifically if they have specific operators to minimize the number of routes. The benchmark, standard benchmark has been also, has been since 1987, the 56 problems from Matthew Solomon. Here are some of the results of those things. The, the one thing I would like to draw your attention to in those slides is the progress. You go from Garcia et al. in 1994, where they're using overall 56 problems, 436 vehicles. And this goes down to in Cordo et al., which is this kind of unified taboo search. 407 in 2001. So just in the space of seven years, we have a drastic reduction in the number of vehicles. Okay, so these days, well, this is a statement that would need maybe to, to be double checked because I wrote this some time ago, is that we have methods with the cumulative number of vehicles around 405, but uh, I still, uh, recommend looking also back to the Totten Vigo book at the VRPTW chapter. There have been larger instances and, uh, and there are interesting results on those larger instances. Now you're going to tell me after all of this, so uh, those, uh, those uh, trajectory-based metaheuristics are not alone on the block. In fact, we all know that they are several population-based metaheuristics. Uh, I would say the number of different population-based metaheuristics about the same number as trajectory-based, if you look in the, in the handbook of metaheuristics, and some, and some of them have been combined and applied to vehicle routing. I will try just to be focused and concise now. Uh, one thing which is interesting is if you look at early application of genetic algorithms where they were using chromosomes that were based, they were using delimiters, explicit delimiters to separate routes in the solution, these were shown to be rather ineffective. And I made, I made back in 1998 a statement uh, where I uh, just said that, well, GAs don't work for, uh, for to solve routing problems. And uh, obviously, uh, later on, my friend Christian Prince made a lot of fun about this because uh, what he did, he came out with a really a breakthrough idea. It's, it's, it's a simple idea, but it's a breakthrough idea in 2001 which is the idea to use chromosomes without delimiters. In fact, what, what he put forward was the idea of just having solutions in the form of a giant tour, which is split optimally by solving a shortest path problem on 
some auxiliary cyclic graph. And this works quite well. Also, on top of this, you can improve routes by local search. He has a nice population management mechanism, which is based on cost spacing. And in the following years, in the early 2000s, this was applied also to other problems, including arc routing problems by Christian and his, uh, his co-authors. Then in 2012 came, uh, well, he, did, he didn't come in 2012, he came earlier, but the paper came in 2012. This paper by, uh, by Thibault, which is based on, on Thibault's dissertation that was in fact jointly supervised with Christian Prince and Trois. And, and the idea is really to, well, to try to push further the principle of hybrid genetic methods. And uh, at first we wanted to tackle periodic and multi-depot problems and then uh, referees forced us to do CVRP. And uh, what are the important things? Well, in those methods, we have uh, several local search procedures to educate individuals. We have, uh, Thibault introduced the concept of bias fitness which is a very clever way of combining quality of solution and diversity, and very important also improved population management mechanism. And this was extended in, in several other papers, for example, uh, 2013, 2014, one with for problems with time windows. And then in 2014, this kind of uh, unified framework that allows to tackle a large number of variants. And um, as far as I know, it's still one of the very best methods for solving the classical CVRP and most of its variants. And uh, it's pretty much, a, it's not the only paper that defines the state of the art, but it's one of the papers that do a series of papers that define the state of the art. Then there's been, I would be, I don't want to forget my Austrian friends who worked uh, quite a number of years on applying ant-based methods to different VRPs. So the group of Richard Hartel, Karl Derner, Mark Freeman, Bill Neimer, and they, they managed to get methods that could solve problems fairly effectively. But my overall conclusion is that they're not really competitive to the best hybrid GAs or trajectory-based method. And as far as I know, they have uh, pretty much let this research line uh, to, to die. So conclusion, uh, well, the conclusion when I, I just went over uh, all those slides is, well, if we look at the last uh, 30, 35 years, we've really come a very long way. And uh, we have methods that are quite effective that can tackle much, much larger instances than 30 years ago. And what is up for the future? To be quite frank, it's not that all that obvious to me. One thing is, I think that we should probably keep on tackling larger and more complex instances. Uh, then I have my uh, other question about stochastic problems because people who know me know that I have uh, a sweet spot in my heart for stochastic VRPs. And, uh, and right now I'm also working on developing new dynamic uh, methods for dynamic VRPs. And I think that those are certainly important applications. And I'm done, Thibault.